What's good, Wizards fans? This is your host, the real Ed Oliver, and my guy Brandon Scott. The Washington Wizards play their first preseason game, and they beat the NBL NBL team 145 to 82. Let's talk about it. You are locked on Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Well, thank you guys for making Lockdown Wizards your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. All right. Myself, the real Ed Oliver, my guy Brandon Scott. We're going to talk about the uh, starters performance, how Blau played, Tyus Jones, and all the guys. We're going to get into it tonight. We are live tonight. It's our first live of the 2023-2024 season. Even if it's preseason, we're super excited. We see a couple people in the chat. Not many, but uh, as expected for a preseason game, but we're excited to chop it up with you guys tonight. 14 people in the chat tonight. Uh, Brandon, let's start off with the excuse me, starting five. We'll talk about Blau as well since he got the start. Um, with Denny being out uh, due to uh, injury precautions. And uh, we definitely want to send prayers out to him with the things that are, are going on in Israel, the unfortunate events right now. Uh, so pray, prayers out for Denny. Um, but focusing on the game tonight, uh, what, what stood out to, to you from the uh, starting five? The game started 15-0, to zero, ended up winning 145-82. to 82, But what stood out to you from the starting five? Oh, many things, man. Like I said, I guess we'll start that. Very good showing, obviously, is against the NBL team. So, but saw a lot from the starting unit. Um, starting with Bilal defensively, wow. I mean, this man is all over the place, man. Those steals, I mean, his instincts on the defensive end, man. He can be an all NBA defense guy, man, in the future. You know, he definitely has those instincts on the defensive end. Um, it's very impressive. You look at three steals, one block, just the instincts on the defensive end are, are impressive. Now, offensively. Oh, I'm not even gonna get on offense yet, but the offensive rebound that led to that that layup, man. I mean, his rebound, he got what six rebounds. So he, you know, he can get there and get rebounds. Now the offensive side is gonna is gonna happen for him. You know, it's gonna is slowly gonna gain that confidence. But driving the lane, I didn't see any hesitancy driving the lane. I mean, the three point shot, you know, I believe he what he shot one, but no hesitancy. He wasn't even hesitant. You know, he took that shot. He took it. So you definitely see the potential as far as his offensive game. But his defensive game just wows you, man. I mean, his instincts, his length, it just he's a monster in defense. Very impressive. Uh, Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma did what we knew they were going to do, score in bunches. I mean, looking at Kuz, 7 for 10, 3 for 5 from 3, 22 points. Looking at the, the pool party, 18 points, 6 for 13. So we know we already know the name of the game is efficiency with Jordan Poole, but 3 for 5 from 3. And, I mean, a lot of his shots, man, he he has a quick release, man. I mean, they're going to score in bunches on the, on the wing, man. Leading to the point guard, Ty, Tyus Jones, man, pushed the pace and it showed. They really pushed the pace and they looked good. I mean, offensively they were fluid, you know, and that's why you saw a lot of open J's on on the wing with Kuz and and Poole, man, because you know you look at it, five assists, eleven points. He was efficient. You know, you you see the vision, you see the leadership, and finally with Gaff. Now Gaff overall looked good. Fifteen points, eight rebounds, five for six. Five blocks, including that block on the homie on the wing, which showed they just, you know, how much length he has as far as on, man. But where every positive is, there's only one negative I really got out of this game, which was um, the landlord has to work on his conditioning. Um, about a six minute mark in the first quarter, he already was, you know, asking West to bring him, take him out. You know, he's got to work on that conditioning, man. Um, but I, outside of that, very impressive. Now, I get it, you know, I'm, I'm it's kind of 50 50 with me because. On one hand, it's a very impressive win. 145 to 82, we smoked them. But it's the NBL team, and you kind of expect them to do that. You know, if we would have lost, man, Lord have mercy, Wizards Twitter would have exploded. <laughs> so, you know, you, you expected them to blow them out. And, you know, talking about the NBL team, man, uh, they, just, they didn't look good, man. Uh, I don't know if it was just a, that much of a talent gap or they just didn't look good. They had a couple guys on there that looked good. I believe, um, try to think his name, and I got to look it up. But there's one guy who's actually a draft prospect for next year. Oh, man, yeah. I, I had to look it up. 
Um, you the, talking about the uh, big man? Uh, yeah, I think he played on the wing. Um, yeah, but he, Ar- he Armstrong or uh, nah, I got a Bobby. You talking about Bobby Clinton? Clinton? I, I believe so. Yeah, okay. Clinton. Yeah, he went I one mean, for twelve tonight. Nah, that ain't him because that's the guy I'm thinking of. <laughs> 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 I had to think of man. Um, but but they had a guy that I believe is a prospect for next year. So yeah, he looked pretty good, but they just they look bad, man. Um. But, you know, get back to the Wizards, man. Very impressed. Very impressed. You know, this is what we expected them to do. Um, Outside of this, you know, Gav working on his conditioning, I like this starting five. You know, Bilal starting, you know. I know Denny's probably going to be that guy when he comes back. But Bilal, I'm trying to tell you, and when he finds that shot, e, this kid is going to be something special in the NBA, man. I see what they see as far as what they saw the potential in the draft. I see it because on the defense, the instincts you just can't teach. I mean, he is a monster in the defensive end. If you if, – you see the athleticism with driving the lane. So if, if he can find a shot, we're cooking with hot grease, homie. So very impressed overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, everybody played well for the most part. Um, they did what they said they wanted to do. They wanted to run. They wanted to shoot a bunch of threes. They made 15 threes, threes tonight. Uh, Tyus Jones' impact was certainly felt. He's looking to push. He's looking to push. He's he's looking to push the pace. He's looking up for Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole had an easy, fast break three that he took. Um, Gafford, you know, Jordan Poole, pick and roll, throwing lobs to Gafford. Tyus Jones threw a couple of lobs to Gafford already. So they're really looking to make that a point in, in, in the pick and roll, in, in the pick and roll plays to get the ball to Gaff. Uh, Gaff, yeah, he did get gassed. You know, I guess, you know, he's coming off the elbow injury. So yeah. you know, I'll give him, you know, as long as he, he's got two weeks or a couple of weeks to get in game shape because he's going to play a lot of minutes. Yeah. We just don't have a lot of bigs at all. Gallo is your backup five. We'll talk about him later. I thought he played a pretty good game too. Um, but yeah, they started off. Fit, they started up fifteen to zero. Um, Kuz and Poole, they scored in bent in bunches. It looked like they weren't forcing it. Uh, Kuz had a lot of step through. He did take a lot of tough shots, but he yeah. shot the ball well. Seven for ten, twenty two points. Uh, Jordan Poole, he looked smooth as well. Hit a couple threes. Yeah, uh, four for eight from the three point line, eighteen points. And um, yeah, Tyus Jones is impressive. Five assists. I don't think he had any turnovers at all. Um, but I think he showed why he should be the starter tonight. I mean, he. Uh, I think he's a guy that's really, really going to settle the troops down and get guys in spots and get guys open looks. So I'm, I'm really intrigued to see how he plays this year, getting the opportunity to start. Uh, and I thought I think he's he's a guy that really is going to take command of the offense for sure and, and get guys open looks. Bilal, I mean, to piggyback back off what you said, I mean, he he looked really darn good defensively. He was yeah. picking up full court. Um, you just see the, his wingspan, how long his arms are. He was just really yeah. disruptive. Got a steal, pluck, a nice dunk. Then he got an offensive rebound and a put back and a put back. So you just see the athleticism. Um, he, he's just a, a young 18 year old guy that's just going to be grown up in this system and developing. And uh, yeah, I mean, if they develop him correctly, I think he can be a really good guy in this league. And I think year one, his biggest strength is going to be defense. Yeah. And I'm, I'm excited to see how, how we implement him defensively and uh, him as a starter. I thought he looked good. Once again, it's, it's the NBL team, like you said. We can't get too excited over this, but there's definitely some building blocks that we can certainly certainly take away from it. Uh, Kuz and Poole, they look like I expected. Gafford uh, looked pretty darn good. The block that you five blocks on the night, a block <laughs> on the jump shot. That was impressive. That was a nice block. And uh, not only that, he tried to do a crossover tonight, too. Not yeah. try, he did a crossover. And uh, then he did a sweep through. He tried to dunk on somebody. So you see him trying to, to add some things to his game. Didn't see any jump shots. That's something I do want to see him add. I don't want to. See, I don't want to really see him shoot threes or anything like that. But if he could add like a free throw jumper, I think that's something that he he should try to add to his game. Oh, absolutely! And I actually found a guy's name, Bull Cool. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, so he he was <laughs> solid, man. I know he's a draw. Uh, oh, Bull Cool for uh, for for the uh, NBL team. Yeah, yeah. So um, but yeah, getting back to the point, man. Um, I'm I gotta give a little more love to Tyus, man, because. Yeah. No disrespect to Monte Morris. Um, mm-hmm. I thought Monte came in, did his job, but there is clearly a difference between those two players, man. I mean, Ty takes charge his offense. Mm-hmm. You know, that was my biggest problem with Monte is that he led the offense as point guard, but he never really took control of the offense. You know what I mean? The the lobs, man, to the, the Gafford. I mean, just they, they they look good. They, they're very fun to watch. You know, Gafford was his man in his own. I mean, I believe he got fouled and um he went in for an three with that dunk. That was another impressive play. Um, but Bilal, you know, I I, I'm, I know I'm famous for saying that we should have got Cam Whitmore, but I see the potential with Bilal, man. I mean, if we can really, really develop him, 
he can be something special because he's on the defensive end is just and he reminds me a lot of OG and Anobi. Where if you look at OG, you know, his first three years in the league, he wasn't a sniper. Now he's he's developed that three point game. He's you know, he, he can put the ball on the on, on the floor and create for himself a little bit. So it's gonna come along. So if they develop him right, we definitely found a diamond in the rough in Black Kulabali, man, because shoot, I mean. I mean, driving through the lane, trying to dunk on people. I mean, he's just got athleticism, man. So that three-point shot, like I said, he missed it, but he took it. You know, that's half the battle. Um, So, yeah, overall, man, very impressed with his team. So I'm I'm interested to see. But here's the thing, yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how they do against NBA talent because I believe the next one up is the, the Charlotte Hornets. So, you know, if they can have this type of showing against an NBA squad, then we're definitely cooking, man. And, we, you know, I know we're rebuilding, but. I think we're. I don't think we're bad, man. Like, worse in the NBA, bad. Like a lot of media is trying to paint us to be. I think that we could be a sleeper playing team. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah, hundred percent. And and Tyus, I think the thing with Monte, I think watching him, he kind of took a backseat to Brad. I'm not saying that you know he was supposed to you know get the ball more than Brad, but I think Tyus is a guy where and, and this is good for Jordan Poole, where Jordan Poole, he can just worry about scoring. Jordan Poole doesn't have to worry about setting guys up, even though he can do that. But uh, Tyus is the guy that is going to be setting Jordan Poole up, setting up Kuzma. So Jordan Poole can just go out there and just play freely and just go out there and score. So yeah. I, I think that's going to work really, really well. So, uh, But we're going to move on to the bench. Before we do that, today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical, the Jace Case. Uh, the Jace Case provides five life-saving, life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get a Jace case is fill out a simple online form, and in some cases, jump on a quick call with one of our board-certified physicians, and you can get a Jace case. Get ongoing care from our physicians on any treatment-related questions. Doctor created, doctor rec- recommended. Uh, Jace case, you got to get one, man, because I'm I'm, t- I'm telling you guys right now, it's flu season's coming up, starting to get cold outside. Um, you still got the the virus going around, so you got to be super safe and use the Jace case, even for a common cold or the flu, it really, really helps out. Um, certainly helped me out in certain situations. When I got the flu or even common cold, runny nose, I took the Jace case, uh, bought a Jace case, and it really helped me out. It helped me recover very, very quickly. So get $20 off on these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code LOCKED ON at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. All right, so let's maneuver to the bench. Uh, you got Johnny Davis, a lot of guys that came off the bench tonight. Uh, and then if you look at the minutes, the way Wes did it, he gave each starter 20 minutes. So yeah. Tyus Jones got 19, but everybody else got 20 minutes. So I thought that was a smart move by uh, Wes on Jr. Just set in their minutes right there. It's a preseason oh, yeah. game. So just cut it off at 20 minutes. You know, you don't want to be – you don't want to have these guys playing 40 minutes, especially against – the um the Taipans team and they they had like ten air balls tonight they they really struggled <laughs> they had a bunch of turnovers and uh Bobby Bobby Clintman who from Wake Forest who was supposed to get drafted next year or this year coming up he uh, struggled went one for twelve but uh, what were your thoughts on the bench Gallo came off the bench Anthony Gill unfortunately pulled a hamstring yeah so he exited the game early um what was your thoughts about the guys coming off the bench. Um, overall, I like what I saw. They kind of did what I expected them to do. Uh, Gallinari, long time scorer in his league, 15 points, shot five for seven, three for four from three. So, look, he's going to have some value. You know, a contending team is going to want to grab him up at the deadline because he looks good. Now, you know, with the ACL injury, you know, you can see the speed ain't there yet. Um, you know, he had a couple of times where he lost the handle, uh, gave the ball up. So, you know, his speed is going to kind of catch up. And Gallo's not a guy that's going to run past anybody but you kind of see where you know his injury kind of has an impact where he's still recovering but i like what i saw from him um delon four points was three steals delon is not a guy who's gonna light up on the scoreboard as far as points but defensively you know running getting in the passing lanes doing what delon does best defending um kispert again doing what he does best shooting 11 points shooting two for five from three but four for seven overall from the field jd johnny davis let's talk about johnny davis real quick 13 points he was proficient, six for eight. I guess the only knock on him, man, is that I, I still I'm not feeling that shot long from three. It's just it, it's still a slow release, and it's something with his leg. I don't I don't. It's, next time, the next game, man, look at it. Um, is is with his right leg. It, it's like he bends his right leg in, and then he shoots, and it's just it's it's such a slow release. I I don't know what changed with the shot. It's just 
Uh, it's just hard to watch, man. I, and I like Johnny Davis, man, but they got to work on the mechanics of that shot because, but overall, you know, driving the lane is his bread and butter, man. You know, you saw a lot of confidence driving in the lane, getting the layups. You know, this, you know, speed is, he got a little more speed. So you see a little more from Johnny, but, you know, just long term, you know, or not long term, you know, long distance shots, man. He's got to work on the mechanics, man. He's got to get a fast release because he has the NBL team, man. But the NBA, they're going to get in your face quicker. And he's got to get that shot off quicker. Um, So Anthony Gill, again, unfortunate. He came in and did what Anthony Gill does. You know, those moments that aren't always in the category. But, you know, hopefully he gets back and he's healthy. But overall, you know, if you look at the bench and obviously the starting unit, everybody did what we expected them to do. Kisper did his thing. Um, So, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm kind of goes back to the same point, man. They did what they expected them to do. Um, Again, it was the NBL team. But they look good. They played as a unit. Especially the first, you know, the – both units played as a unit. They 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 look fl- fluid. Um, Ties did his thing. So I'm, I'm impressed, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I I like to win, but there's a big butt in there. Um, we'll see how they do against NBA talent. You know, we if we show out, especially the first unit, if we show out against the Charlotte Hornets, man. We definitely cooking with some grease, man. So yeah, we'll see. You know, overall very impressive. But I, again, I don't want to get too happy, man, because that other team looks so bad. Man. <laughs> I mean, they look yeah. bad, man. They do. I mean, so yeah. Overall, I, I'm impressed. Yeah, they did. Uh, I'm trying to see how, how many turnovers did uh, the Cairns end up with? Uh, they had 25. We had 16. So we had a couple sloppy plays here and there. We had 64 points in the paint to their 40. Uh, but Johnny, I thought he had a couple good transition plays. He had a pull up jumper before the uh, buzzer went off for the shot clock. Yeah, and he had a bunch of fast break plays. Yes, the shot is a little funky right now. His legs kind of go in, his knees kind of go inward, and uh, I could we could kind of see that on a clip they were showing it on practice on uh, social media that was going around. It was Blau shooting threes and Johnny shooting threes, and you could just see his shooting form. The shooting form has changed since Wisconsin. They've been trying to change it. it looks like the coaching staff has. We'll see if the developments de- developmental staff can uh, get his shot a little bit better. You know, Brian Keith, David Vander Vanterpool. Yeah. Uh, different coaches like that, so we'll see on that. But yeah, I mean, he looked confident out there. Uh, a lot of fast break, a lot of transition buckets, a lot of easy baskets for him. He had an and one as well, six for one, thirteen points. Only shot one three, so I thought he was fine tonight. Uh, Eugene was impressive. He had a lot of easy yeah. baskets again, six for eight, one for two for three. Uh, he's strong, man. He just took the ball from one guy. He looks like he could play football. Like he could play fullback out there, a linebacker, and he he just took the ball away from somebody and uh, got an easy steal. Uh, Gallo, 15 points, three for four from the three point line. He had a dunk as well. Coming back from the ACL injury, uh, pick and pop, pick and rolling. I think the pick and pop would be really good for him because he can knock down a three ball. So he looked pretty good tonight. Uh, Corey Kisper, once again, doing his job. Excuse me, knocking down threes, two for five. Uh, DeLon Wright was solid, just being a pest out there. He had six assists, so he's moving the ball. Once again, assist to turnover ratio. Uh, same thing with uh, Tyus Jones. They both did a good job doing that. Uh, it's unfortunate for Anthony Gill with that injury. Uh, Xavier Cooks. And somewhat of a homecoming game for him. He had two points, three boards. Uh, didn't do much. Was just kind of active out there too. Jules Bernard, the uh, the guy that they brought up or they signed from the uh, G League or the developmental league, he had uh, three points, three boards. And I do like Ryan Rollins a lot, man. I thought he yeah. was fluid out there. Yeah. Uh, I thought you know he didn't shoot the ball too well, but uh, six points, three assists, and uh, two boards. I thought he played pretty well. Knocked down a couple shots. Was pretty active on the defensive end. He tried to do a floater like Tyus Jones, but he missed it. Uh, and Mike Muscala didn't get in. I'm not. He, they said uh, I'm looking at the 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 stat sheet on uh, ESPN. It says DNP coach's decision, so I'm not sure. We'll see if he plays the next game. Yeah. And uh, Taj didn't play. Denny didn't play. So Taj was out. We'll see if Taj plays in the next game. But uh, I know he was practicing, so they just decided not to play him. But yeah, I thought I thought everybody played well. I mean, it was just it was a they they're just. To piggyback on what you said again, the, the talent gap is is just very. It was it was a, it was a wide margin for talent yeah. for the talent gap. So they, they did what they were supposed to do. They they are who who we thought they were. They didn't lo- let them off the hook. It would have been embarrassing if they would have lost. Would have been somewhat of embarrassing as well if they if they would if they would have won by less than ten points. So um, yeah, I, I thought they pushed the pace like they said they would, and they they knocked yeah. down three. So uh, can they do it? Can they do this against an NBA team, an NBA caliber team in the Hornets? They play again on Thursday, so. I'm excited for that game too. Absolutely, and kind of going back to what you said, Eugene from Eugene. For for a second, I was like, man, 
How, what is Jamin Davis doing with a Wizards jersey on, man? I mean, he's solid, man. <laughs> I mean, homie is solid. Um, so he looks like he's a keeper, man. I mean, you know, he's got strength. You know, he's got some athleticism. So overall, from across the board, you know, AG was hurt, but, you know, Cooks, Cook is, you know, kind of like AG. But overall, man, very impressive game overall. Um, going back to Johnny, because I'm looking at a com- couple comments here. I'm going to shout out uh, Guru Strong said, stop riding Johnny. If it falls, who cares if it's ugly? Totally agree with you. But that's the thing, man. Three-point shot ain't hitting. You know, his mid-range, look, I, hey, I'll say this. Johnny hit a couple mid-range. His mid-range shot is fluid. You know, he can definitely drive the lane. It's just that three-point shot just, you know, it's just, I don't know, the mechanics, because they wasn't like that his rookie year. I felt like he had more confidence with three-point shot his rookie year than he does now. It's just the mechanics. But, you know, I I, I hear you, man. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to get a quick word from FanDuel, but uh, we're going to read a few comments after the break, and then the comments we don't get to, we'll read them tomorrow because we'll do a preview of the uh, Hornets preseason game. <clears throat> Got you. Tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. Oh, if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in into action than right now. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over and unders, and parlays, my favorite. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season, FanDuel, the official partner of the National Football League. And thanks for making Locked the Wizards your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. We're going to do a preview for the next preseason game against the Charlotte Hornets. So definitely chop it up with us and check it out. Yes, sir. We're going to get to the comments. Uh, Kyle Kuzma just tweeted out, yes, Belal can defend. Ooh, uh, so yeah. he was hyping him up uh, on Twitter. And uh, we know it's it's, it's 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 not a regular season game. We know if it was, Bilal probably would get the defensive belt if they are going to continue doing that this year, if Wes is going to, get to continue doing that. So we got 54 people in the chat for a preseason game. That is pretty good. So we thank you guys for showing up. We know you guys yes, are sir. super, super excited for the season. Um, let's get to the first comment here. Biggie Steve, he said, we look good, be cool, look sharp. Absolutely. Be cool. I think it's going to catch on. <laughs> yeah that is a smooth nickname uh uptown georgia ab dc said what's good guys great game definitely was a good game they won by 40 40 some points uh p yaka honestly despite beating them by a lot we played sloppy but i was impressive though yeah i mean it, it's the first game it's the yeah. first preseason game so I, I think it did look like a scrimmage at times it did look like a i mean it basically was a scrimmage it's a preseason game but it looked like just a game where you kind of want to work on things to get better, just to improve. Like Gafford was doing a crossover. I kind of like seeing that. Even if he makes a mistake, <laughs> yeah, this is the time to make those mistakes. These are the times to practice on what you worked on in the off season. If it looks ugly, so be it. Um, kind of like uh, what Guru said about Johnny. You know, you just got to work on stuff right now. So this is the time to do it and work on things, especially against a inferior team uh, like the team they play tonight. So. Um, yeah, some things are going to look sloppy. This is their first time. We got a lot of new guys. Tyus is, is new. Jordan Poole is yeah. new. Eugene is new. Uh, Gallo is new. So there's so many fresh faces on this team. So there's a lot of time. There's, it's going to take time for these guys to gel and get used to playing with each other for sure. So, um, yeah, if it looks sloppy, then uh, I'm not surprised at all. No, not at all, man. I think that the more they play together, hit into the regular season, they're going to look more fluid. But for them, first time out, Playing together, slightly sloppy, yeah, but you see the potential to how fluid this offense can be. Because you know, if you, I don't know if you checked it out, man, but you know, there's times where they ran offense to Coos and when he brought the ball up, mm, you know. Yeah. So you know, it, it, it's fluid, man. And I like what I saw, Tyus, man. I, I see a lot of comments on here about Tyus. Tyus, I'm trying to tell you, he's that guy at point, man. I, you know, I know we talk about the, the expiring contracts, a lot of these vet contracts, man. But you know, who knows? He could be a long term fit at point guard. You know, you just never know because he looks good. If he can really get the best out of this lineup, especially with guys like Bill Allen and Denny getting their offensive game going along, and we know what Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma are going to do. So I, I love the potential of Tyus Jones running his offense. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Tyus, he, he really does look like a floor general. He's yeah. a guy that's going to push it. When he gets the board or Gafford gets the board and, and gives it to Tyus, he's been looking for Jordan Poole. So I mean, they may have looked sloppy at times, but they look—they look like they played together for a while. Yeah, the way Tyus was connecting with Jordan, 
uh, Jordan Poole, the way he was connecting with Kuz, the way he was throwing lobs to Gaff or getting the ball to Gaff. The floater looked good. Um, he's shooting that floater from almost the free throw line. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's getting that thing up. He, he's getting that floater up there. So, um, Tyus, yeah, he, he he certainly looks like an upgrade, and and I have nothing against Monte Morris, but yeah, I just think he's a guy that is not going to defer to kind of like I just felt like guys were deferring to Brad. We're just like, okay, I'm just going to give the ball to Brad and get out the way, which is at times it's just the way the offense was designed and the team and the roster was set up. But it looks like Tyus is a guy that, that certainly can take over some games and really uh, take command and take control. So um, I, I, I like what I saw tonight. Absolutely. Um, I've got a couple comments um, from Biggie Steve. He's kind of reinforcing what we're saying. Uh, Tyus Jones floater was pure. Can't wait to see Gaffer come down with some of those dunks from him. Absolutely. I mean, Gaffer, man, <laughs> shoot, he looked good. The, the lobs, there's a lot of potential with his offense. And, you know, like I said, um, nothing against Monte, man. It's just I think the biggest thing with Monte is just his fit. You know, it, it wasn't so much his his game because if you look at turnover to to um, assist ratio, it's Tyus Jones and it's Monte Morris one two I believe. If you look at the list of players, so mm-hmm. Monte want to scrub it when it comes to that. It's just you know deferring to Bill. You know, if you look at this year's team, you have a team where they, everybody's got a job to do. You know, and, and I'm not gonna get on bad. You know, it's just you have a, you know everybody's got their job to do. So you got a point guard. You know, you know what players the offense runs best through, and they're wrong with that. You know, just just so I love it, man. Let's yeah, see. yeah. Biggie Steve said it well. Uh, he's he uh, creates his own shot, and yeah. he's not scared to take it to the rack. The floater, he has he has a, a, a arsenal of moves to to get to the basket and score. Uh, I think his seventy seven said the team that we played was aspirin. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they, were, <laughs> they were pretty darn bad. I actually yeah. kind of don't like that we – I wouldn't put them on the schedule next year. I really wouldn't, honestly. I probably I probably would just keep it to NBA teams <laughs> next year. Now, I see the Blazers are playing the New Zealand Breakers. The The Blazers are actually losing to the New Zealand Breakers right now, 8-7. It's very early in the first quarter, but I actually wouldn't put them on the team. And uh, the Mavericks lost to Real Madrid. So Yeah, um, I saw that. So you know it depends. So I'm 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 actually not, I'm not gonna sleep on some of the overseas teams because some of them can beat you. I mean we saw I know the the FIBA and the Olympics are certainly different. We saw USA didn't even get the bronze medal, but uh, yeah, this team was 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 uh, was they it was it was it was almost like a uh, like when um, in, in college basketball when they play like the 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 the. the the division three team to start off the season. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of how it felt. Like like uh like the Georgetown. 16th seed in the tournament type deal. Yeah, it kind of felt like <laughs> that. It really did. So um if they're gonna do this again with an overseas team, maybe you want to find a uh, a better team. Yeah. But personally I don't know if I would do this again. I mean it was good for their confidence, <laughs> but personally I don't know if I would do this again. Yeah, but real Real Madrid is a powerhouse man. I mean yeah. that's they're a powerhouse. I mean, they, they've had a lot of talent coming to the NBA. So, you know, even on the oversized or not oversized overseas perspective, you know, there's a big gap of talent when it comes to Real Madrid and, and this team. And it's not a knock against them, man. You know, I mm-hmm. think it was interesting to see, you know, kind of different leagues playing each other. But like you said, maybe we need to evaluate them before they come over here, man, because it was, it was tough, man. I mean, it was uh, tough to watch game on their part, man. So, you know, we'll yeah. see. And Xavier Cooks, he was the MVP of that league. As well, um, so you know, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, the landlord was uh hitting those laws peacefully. Yeah. In reality, yeah, he was, he was. Uh, did we read Piaka's comment? My main thought going through the game through my head while watching Blau was if we should trade Denny before his contract is up. Just would say now, I mean, that's something we can leave for the next episode, but you know, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I. I'll probably leave that one alone right now. I think we'll just let that play out. But um, let's talk I about mean, this comment. Yeah, go I ahead. mean, Bilal, Bilal hasn't played against NBA talent, though. You know, yeah, that's the thing, though. Yeah. I mean, he looks good, but Denny, think about it, man. Denny's been shutting down some some mm-hmm. heavy hitters in the NBA. I mean, so you, you got to give him his credit. I mean, Denny just shut down guys like Giannis. So, you know, Bilal looked good, but, you know, we you got to see how he does against these NBA squads, man, before we can really make a yeah. determination. Yeah. I think so too. I think so too. Uh, Denny has has proven that he's been a, a really good defender against some really really good NBA players and really some guys that can score. You brought up Giannis, 
Brandon Ingram he, when he was yeah. throwing up the X. Uh, he, he's he's done a, a a fine job against some elite scores in this league. So yeah, it's too it's very early. It's one game. It's a preseason game against a team that is really um, inferior to the Wizards. So it, it, it's it's just tough to say that right now. But uh, yeah. but I look good. He did look good. I like what I saw. Uh, we'll probably read one more. Um, I guess I guess we'll end on this one. <laughs> Man, you your boy having it night, huh? And, uh, like, multiverse Joe, we'll get to your comment, and uh, Billy Shakur, we'll get to your comment on the next episode as well. We will make sure to get to you guys tomorrow because we're gonna do a preview of the Hornets game because they play again on Thursday night. But uh, we'll let we'll end on Guru Strong's comment. Yeah, y'all. Hey, look, I'm a big, big fan of Denny, man. I, you know, I, I know what his capabilities are. I know what he needs to work on, man. But you know, I like Denny, man. I, I really do hope we can find a long-term fit here in D.C. And if not, I hope we can put him in a position where his he can flourish. So, yeah, I, I'm tough, man. But look, you think I'm tough on Denny, man. <laughs> look, I was tough on Brad last year. I, I, like, a lot of people got to smoke last year. So, no, nah, I like Denny, man. I really do. I think he – I hope he succeeds, man. Right. Yeah, I, I'm rooting for Denny as well. And, um, you know, we try to give him credit when credit is due. Yeah. You know, when he had that turbo week. I definitely gave him a lot of credit. Um, you know, when he's played well, I definitely give him credit. The Celtics game last year where we beat Celtics when they had Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they had a fully healthy squad. We beat him by, what, 25 or something? Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, Denny played a heck of a game. So uh, I'm, I'm ex- I really want to see what he does this year on a contract year. I know there's a lot of uh, things weighing on him heavily mentally right now. But, yeah. um, you know, once – the season starts, you know, hopefully he can lock in and and, um, and take care of business here uh, on the court. So I know it's going to be very tough emotionally for him, but uh, I'm rooting for Denny. I really am. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So we're going to wrap it up here, but uh, we're going to get to everybody's comments. Uh, take that. We see your comment as well. So we're, we're going to multiverse Joe talking about the running style. I like the running style, too. So we'll talk about that tomorrow a little bit and see. Uh, we'll see if Wes can keep this up. Uh, the running and running and gunning, running and pay, <laughs> pushing the pace style. We'll see if we can keep this up. But uh, I just want to thank you guys for once again for making Locked On Wizards your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you guys get podcasts. Make sure you guys subscribe and hit the notification bell. Hell to the Wizards. Peace.